Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today I am very, very excited to bring you a review for the new Transformers Legacy Walmart exclusive Autobot Night Prowler. For anyone not familiar with this toy and has, you know, just no idea where it came from, this is a toy that's never existed before. It came close, it had a prototype, and it was going to be released in the Transformers Universe line as part of a Halloween Horror Con subline, which was, incidentally, a Walmart exclusive. That little subline was canceled, and Night Prowler never saw the light of day, so in a really roundabout funny way, he's come back to us through Walmart. Now this toy is naturally a recolor of the Kingdom Cheetor toy, instead of the original Beast Wars Cheetor, like, you know, Universe Night Prowler. And he does have some color differences compared to the original, namely the lack of baby blue accents, which is a shame in my opinion. I, I think they made him a little more unique and interesting, but for whatever reason, either budgetary or aesthetic, they dropped that color. So, if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at the toy's packaging, then we'll open it up, we'll get a look at the instructions, and then we'll see Night Prowler himself in both Beast and Robot modes. Naturally, I will have plenty of bots for group shots and comparisons today, and then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So Night Prowler comes in your standard Legacy Deluxe packaging with the addition of a clear plastic window, unlike most Legacy figures. You get your branding and everything around here, you get his name, and you may have already noticed that he's Autobot Night Prowler. You got the Autobot symbol. Now you would think, normally, should he be a Maximal? I mean, Autobots don't typically turn into organic animals, and normally you'd be right. However, as I mentioned, Night Prowler is originally from the Transformers Universe line, which was almost kind of the first version of Legacy, if you think about it, right? It's a multiversal crossover. You had characters from all over the place, whether it was like G1, Beast Wars, Armada, uh, Robots in Disguise, all being lumped in this kind of final battle of, you know, Primus and Unicron. However, to simplify things, rather than keep all the characters' factions, you know, as they are in their, like, parent universe, they were all just split into Autobots or Decepticons. You know, good characters being Autobots, bad characters being Decepticons. And there was an in-universe explanation for that, but really when it came down to it, the toy designers at the time just felt that too many sub-factions would be confusing to kids. So they simplified it, which is why it's only been fairly recently that we've seen factions in Transformers toys other than Autobots and Decepticons. For the longest time, they really, really just wanted to keep it very simple, and only now, I guess this philosophy has changed on what they think kids can handle, and, you know, we branch out, and we get the Mercenaries, Predacons, Maximals are back. But because the original Night Prowler was meant to be an Autobot, this one is too. So you really can think of him as being, like, actually plucked from the universe conflict. Which could explain why he never showed up. <laughs> he might have been pulled into the Legacy conflict before he ever had a chance to participate in the universe one. Our right, history lesson aside, we get some nice artwork of the Cheetah mode here. Well, I guess not really Cheetah. What is he, a Snow Leopard, I think? Something like that. Um, but the, the Beast mode right here with glowing red eyes. I think it's just recycled Cheetor artwork, I'm pretty sure, just recolored. And then here we get uh, pictures of the character's robot mode, both close up and far away. We get Night Prowler's name in Ancient Autobot. And then on the back we get renders of the toy in both Beast and Robot modes. He takes 20 steps to transform, just like Buzzsaw before him. And just like Cheetor, he has, you know, a tail axe weapon and that's it. Fairly simple toy. If you've been watching me for a while, you already know how I feel about the Kingdom Cheetor mold and its, you know, many shortcomings. So it's not the best mold to, you know, kind of plant this guy onto, but it's what they got, right? They're not gonna dig up, like, the Universe Cheetor mold or, you know, I mean, I guess they do have access to the Beast Wars one, but, you know, they're releasing this guy through Legacy. If they wanted to release the Beast Wars uh, mold, they'd probably do it through the Vintage line. But despite my misgivings about the mold itself, this is a really nice looking deco on the mold. So, you know, it is what it is and I'm gonna enjoy it either way. And then over here, we get the Autobot side, or I guess, let's say good guy side, of your standard legacy side panel art. Here's our instruction sheet for Night Prowler. You can see his name with Autobot logo, all the other Transformers logos and stuff. Nice render right in the middle. Open this up. This just shows you how to have him hold his little tail weapon. Though you'd think the axe should face the other way, right? 
and then just our transformation to his beast mode. That's it. Pretty simple. Just like the Waspinator mold, there's not too much of to this toy, right? Just a simple conversion and a uh, piece of the beast that becomes a single piece weapon. Now we get to see Night Prowler's beast mode, and oddly, there are certain sections of this beast mode that are cast in a much darker gray than the rest. And I would normally chalk that up to just like, oh, well, that's, you know, because of the robot mode, it's different colors. Which you can see some hints of that, especially around the shoulders of, like, that yellow. But I can't find any rhyme or reason to why certain areas are colored the way they are. Like, what do his beast feet have to do with the robot mode? What about these knee joints, you know? Even these little side panels that form his hands. Like, why are those specifically a different color? I, I really don't know. It's... Odd, to say the least. Uh, I'm not really sure what they were going for with that. And it does make the beast mode, unfortunately, look a little more disjointed than it already does with the yellow sticking out. So yeah, I, I don't really get it. Um, who knows, who knows why they did what they did. I, I imagine that these bits are unpaintable plastic and maybe they just don't have that available in the same shade as the rest of this. That's all I can think of. So yeah, very weird. Other than that though, you can see he's got the spot pattern all over him, and I believe it's the same paint mask used on Cheetor. Of course, I'll verify that here in a moment. He's got these really cool red eyes that lack the pupils, much like the old Beast Wars toys and their recolors, where usually they just had these you know, solid colored eyes. They didn't actually have pupils drawn on. So he kind of harkens back more to that than the more recent philosophy of the more realistic looking Beast modes. Uh, he also has, you know, good tolerances, despite the fact this mold's been used quite a few times, everything still feels nice and tight, no loose floppy ball joints or anything, mouth still opens and closes. Mouth is just painted all gray inside, which is a little lame, would have been nice to actually painted the teeth and the, you know, tongue and stuff a different color, could even use the same red they used for the eyes, but oh well. Uh, you know, it's about what you'd expect, it's a mostly gray recolor of Cheetor. Now we get a cool group shot of all of our big cats released across the War for Cybertron and now Legacy lines. And the first thing I want to say is apparently my memory must be slipping, because I now realize that none of these guys actually have painted pupils. I thought he was the exception, but nope, uh, I'm misremembering. Only the Tigertron characters and... No, not even Ravage, so just the Tigertrons actually have painted pupils on their beast modes. The rest, just doing the solid glowy eye thing, so... Boy, just really starting to slip here, huh? I also want to point out that, yes, he does indeed share a paint mask for his spots with the uh, Cheetor versions of the mold. I also have her notice that my Netflix Cheetor, and let me know in the comments if yours is like this too or it's just mine, he's missing the spots on one side right here. You see that, where like the robot thighs are? He's got them here like he's supposed to, and then they're gone right here. So that's odd. Um, hmm. It's got to be a factory mistake, right? So, I don't know, are they all like that? Or is it just mine? I mean, I have had weird things like that happen before. Like my Earthrise, uh, was it Ramjet, I believe? He's actually missing a Decepticon logo on one of his wings, so... It could just be that. Could be a missed piece. Now, I do know that on my Tigertrons, the Mutant Tigertron here, the orange one, actually is missing some paint apps on his legs too. But it's on both sides, so I think that was intentional. It was just a bit of a budget cut or something. So yeah, uh, let me know if yours has that same issue or not, or if I just got really unlucky. It kind of hurts the fact that this is, you know, my favorite version of, you know, the Kingdom Shooter, so it would be a shame if mine is defective in some way. All right, but aside from all that, you can see, you know, just kind of the variety going on here. These four are all exactly the same mold, right? Your Kingdom Shooter, Netflix Shooter, your Shadow Panther, and then our Ravage here, as you can see, is a very, very heavy retool of that mold. And then our two Tagatrons are actually not the same mold at all. They're Voyager classes, just built with a lot of the same engineering as the Cheetor toy, only fleshed out more because it's bigger and has a higher price point. So, yeah, this really covers all of the big cat characters at this point. I can't think of any more that actually had an organic cat mode. Like, you can get out in the weeds and look at something like Cat Scan or Cataclysm or something from, like, BotCon. But those were all based on different versions of Cheetor. So I think as far as just your regular organic beast mode big cats, I think we're really covered now. 
course, I'll be happy to be corrected on that one because that could mean we might get more in the future. Okay, now we're going to see Night Prowler's robot mode. And it is about what you would expect. He has his primary colors from his beast mode and then a lot of yellow thrown in. Now, unfortunately, if you are familiar with the prototype of the original Night Prowler toy, there's also supposed to be some baby blue highlights thrown in that they left off. Now, normally, I would chalk this up to like just, you know, artistic license, kind of like what they did with the concurrently released Buzzsaw, where they actually slathered him in a bunch of black. However, that one, you know, it was pretty clear that they were going out of their way to add that color because they had to paint it all on there. This guy, they just simply didn't paint him more. And he does appear to use the same paint mask for his robot mode that the Netflix Cheetor does, which really just comes out to less paint because they don't paint the shins, they don't paint the axe blade. Unlike the Netflix Cheetor, however, he kind of made up for the lack of paint by using some very, very nice looking shades of plastic and paint. It had a very nice metallic quality to it. This guy, he uses the same just boring, flat kind of colors that the Kingdom Cheetor uses. So now he's just a lot of flat plastic. So personally, I find myself pretty darn disappointed with this guy. I do need to correct myself. He does get one added bit of paint that the other two don't, and that's on his helmet here, because otherwise his helmet would just be gray. So I do have to take that back a little bit. They could have just left his head gray, like they left the Cheetor heads yellow, but at least for the Cheetor heads, it made a little bit of sense. Here, they really needed to paint it, or it would have been just very drab looking. But they use this very, very flat shade of yellow. Look, I mean, it is, it's got no sheen to it. It looks like I painted this myself. In fact, you can see on the helmet, there's some little bit of paint that's already flaked off just from being in the package. So I gotta, I gotta say I'm not impressed. Uh, we, we talked about the darker shade of gray being used. And I couldn't really figure out why. The only reason that I can see that's apparent uh, why they would use that particular shade and not something that closely matches the rest is maybe just to give his forearms a different color than the rest of his arms which does make his forearms look a little bit more interesting, but at great sacrifice to the beast mode. And I really don't think it was a worthwhile trade-off. They honestly should have just kept it all the same color at that point. So, I don't know. It's it's really, I think what they were doing is they are kind of going for a shortcut. They were looking to add, you know, some different shades of gray to them without actually resorting to having to paint anything. So they just changed up some of the plastic colors. And the end result is less than ideal. Now, if they really wanted to make him look nice, they could have painted the forearms. They could have painted his hands inside the little, you know, fur guards here. They could have painted the shins or, you know, the bottom of the paws or something. They really, really took the cheap way out with this guy. And I hate it because they went through so much effort painting up Buzzsaw to look, like, really fancy. Now, I didn't agree with their direction of, you know, adding so much black to that figure because it kind of threw him off from his original look. But at least there was effort there, like the color gradient on the knees, all that stuff. It looked good. It looked like there was really some love put into that toy. This guy looks like he was just kind of thrown in there as an afterthought and very minimal effort. I mean, they didn't change his spot patterns or anything. They didn't add any sort of flair. The most you can say they did was at least paint his helmet. So there's that, I guess. I will point out again that he does have an Autobot symbol on his forehead crest, Vice Maximal symbol, and, you know, already explained why that is. Uh, some people might find that jarring. I did a little bit, but given the context of who this character is and the fact that he is apparently pulled from, like, the 2003 Transformers Universe conflict, it does make sense. So I really don't mind it. Where I am really disappointed is just the weird choice of plastic colors and the overall lack of paint, because... Touching him up with some highlights really would have done wonders for this and not make him look like, honestly, a knockoff. He reminds me of those weird multicolored um, Dinobot knockoffs that you would find packaged with clothing for some reason if you went to like a Sears. In fact, my son had one of those. It was terrible quality. I mean, the thing practically fell apart. Uh, he reminds me of that with his just kind of very boring flat colors. Like, I, I can't say I'm a fan, honestly. And I know, you know, some people say like, well, at least we're getting Night Prowler. And we are. And I am, I am happy this exists. I am. It's better than not getting him at all. But man, they really just phoned this one in, I think. And, ugh. 
it, it, it bothers me, it really does, because it doesn't look nearly as good as it should. Here once again are our other big cats in their robot modes. So now you can see how the main form of this character stacks up against his peers. And like I said, his paint scheme seems to be taken exactly from the Netflix toy, with the exception of the added yellow and the helmet, which, you know, thank God for that. Now these are the paint applications I mentioned that are on the standard Cheetor as well as Shadow Panther here, where he gets it on the thighs, or not the thighs, sorry, the shins, on the axe blade, and then Shadow Panther goes a step further, even gets paint on his forearms. So honestly, he is the most well-painted version of this. Well, to be fair, he doesn't have to have the spots painted on because he's all black, so I guess that extra budget went there. But like this right here, these robot mode details are really what like all these guys should look like. But, you know, paint apps have been getting, I think, more and more sparse in recent times. And yeah, it just, it really is a shame because <laughs> this guy could have been so much better than what he is. Then, of course, we get Ravage, who strikes a very, very different silhouette here because, like, from, like, the knees up, everything about him is pretty much different. And then we get our two Tigatrons, who, you know, like I said, are Voyagers, so they are much taller, as they should be, because Tigatron is supposed to be bigger than Cheetor. But you can still see the similarity in the engineering. They basically took the same design and then just fleshed it out more to give them a much more satisfying-looking beast mode and robot mode. So this guy does look good in a group shot with the other big cats. You know, it kind of helps take your mind off, you know, just how much they skipped on him and the weird plastic choices and just makes him look like part of the crowd and just another one of your cool cat characters to, you know, have all sorts of Predacon or Decepticon bashing adventures with. I can only hope that we actually get an update to the Transmetal Cheetor form because that thing has quite a bit of recolor potential and I would love to see it fleshed out. I'm also hoping that maybe we get a Transmetal Tigatron, potentially out of this mold, though I would like to see some tweaks made to make it actually look Transmetal and not, you know, furry. But we'll have to wait and see. Maybe one day in the near future we might actually see a toy of Cataclysm himself, because that would be a similarly long-awaited character who just never got a toy. Here's a quick group shot with the other two Legacy Beast exclusives from Walmart. We have the first figure I reviewed, Sandstorm, based off of the BotCon exclusive toy. And then Buzzsaw, which was an old recolor of Waspinator from the Beast Wars days, brought forward now into Legacy, with a new head to reflect the old robot head of the old toy. And honestly, I hate to say this, but Night Prowler is my least favorite amongst them. You basically have a fantastic color scheme on a rather lackluster mold. Then you have a color scheme that was, you know, given a lot of love, but is not something that really suits my taste for a revisitation of Buzzsaw on a fantastic mold. And then you have just a very lame color scheme on my least favorite deluxe toys in War for Cybertron. So just, he's just the worst in all categories. <laughs> like, even though I don't like the amount of uh, black on Buzzsaw, it's at least well done. I mean, look how good his knees look, the wings are cool, all that stuff. He looks, honestly, he kind of reminds me of those old uh, Universe Store exclusives that came out at the tail end when they were, you know, just kind of junking everything and you'd see them in those, what do they call, Market 6 stores, like those discount stores, your Big Lots and Ross and all that. And, you know, they were like super cheap, just cash-ins on existing molds, way lower quality than even, you know, your normal Transformers Universe stuff. Just kind of thrown out there in a new plastic color and called a new character. That's what this reminds me of. It doesn't even have, you know, the prestige of the original Night Prowler toy. And I hate that. I really, really want to love this thing because the history behind the character is so cool and I've wanted for so long to get a Night Prowler. And then you get it and it's like, oh, <laughs> that's it. That's that's what you guys gave us, huh? Well, that's great. Okay, to make up for the fact that I have bashed this poor toy into oblivion, here's a nice touching little reunion between Night Prowler and his other... Beast Era recolor slash Children of Primus. It may have taken a few decades, but he is finally home with his teammates to go battle the multiversal threat of Unicron. So, if you've been wanting this guy for a long time to put in your universe collection, you know, that is if you don't want to keep him on like a legacy shelf, he's finally there. He may be a little disappointing compared to what we were hoping for, but I mean, he does blend right in, right? The really strange coloration, 
the Autobot symbol right there. You can see it, you know, on Silverbolt. Uh, Crystal Widow here has one right there on her little abdomen area. And yeah, I mean, it just, it works. He really does blend in very well. And I'm honestly kind of tempted to put him on my universe shelf instead of my legacy one. We'll have to decide on that. But honestly, he just, he works very well in either one. And as someone who is a self-professed fan of the original universe line, despite its flaws and, you know, quirkiness, this does bring me some level of happiness to many years after the fact, get a new addition to that roster. Because who thought in 2022 we would get a new Transformers Universe character? And that in itself is pretty cool, I do have to admit. And this completes our look at Legacy Night Prowler. I have very mixed feelings on this toy. There's a part of me that's just happy to actually get this character, something I thought would never happen in like a million years. I thought he was just you know, long lost and forgotten. Hasbro would never acknowledge his existence. But then here he is. So that in of itself is very, very cool. But then when we actually get the toy and we see what it is, I can't help but be disappointed. Uh, you know, behind the, like, between the incoherent color scheme of the cheetah mode, the utter lack of any sort of meaningful detailing aside from at least, you know, giving him a yellow helmet, and, you know, just the very flat, boring colors used for this, it's hard to be very excited once you get in hand. You're like, oh, yeah, Night Prowler! Oh, that's that's Night Prowler, huh? That's that's what you went with. So, you know, it's I don't want to sound ungrateful to the design team for, you know, releasing this because I do want them to know that we do appreciate these, you know, super super deep cuts. We really do as, you know, longtime fans. We love it when some, you know, underrepresented or forgotten character finally gets to have a, you know, representation in plastic. But man, you guys got to try a little harder <laughs> cuz this feels so very phoned in like nothing no other no blue like i get the blue is a, a little clashy but that was that was kind of the magic of universe it was ridiculous colors but at least they weren't boring colors like they might have been eye searing you know a la maybe generation two but there was something going on there this guy he looks like you just did as little as you can really get away with and still call a night prowler so for that i'm not thrilled with him now I'm happy I picked him up, I'm happy he exists, and I think for anybody that, uh, you know, really, really wants Night Prowler, people that know the story behind him and have always wanted one, I think you'll be satisfied enough by picking this up. But when I look to the, the newer fans, or, you know, more casual buyers, just kids that see a cool, you know, Transformers toy on the shelf, what are they getting out of this? You know, they're gonna be like, who is this guy? I've never heard of him. Looks lame. I'm not picking it up. And I can almost guarantee that he will sell the worst out of the three legacy beasts that have been released in this you know, little Walmart subline. I'd have it be uh, proven wrong, but I just think there's more there when you look at Buzzsaw and Sandstorm. I, I just find them far more interesting. Even though I don't like Sandstorm's mold, I really don't like this guy's mold, and then the color scheme is just killing it for me. So, yeah, I would really only truly recommend this guy if you have some attachment to the character. If you know who Night Prowler is and you always thought the whole story behind the Halloween horror cons was kind of cool, we are, in a way, getting his uh, little pack-in adversary. It used to be a purple and black Waspinator, and now he's being released in the form of, I believe it's Parasite is the name they're going with, which is going to be that purple and black Waspinator uh, recolor that is going to be in the Buzzworthy Bumblebee line. So, a little different. He'll go from, you know, a canceled Walmart exclusive to Target exclusive, unlike this guy that stuck with Walmart. And he's not Waspinator anymore, he's a different character, which I actually prefer that. It makes more sense to have a different character than just purple Waspinator. So I'm all for that. And uh, I, I do look forward to picking that guy up and pairing him up with Night Prowler. I just wish Night Prowler could have been better because he is a dud amongst some otherwise really good recolors of these uh, Kingdom Wolves. So, yeah, pick him up if you like the idea of owning Night Prowler. If you're someone who's newer to the brand or you just don't really care for the obscure characters, you can easily pass on this guy because he is one of the worst uses of this mold yet. I think the only thing I dislike more than him is the Kingdom version of Cheetor because that thing's just ugly. It's just a really ugly version of Cheetor. So, yeah, very, very uh, conditional recommendation here. Of course, that is just how I feel about Night Prowler. Perhaps you feel differently. 
do you think this is a really good toy? Do you not really care about the colors and you're just so overjoyed to have them that it really doesn't matter? Or are you more critical? Either you just don't care for owning Night Prowler or you're very disappointed with the way he came out. Any and all feedback is always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this very, very long-awaited look at Transformers Legacy Night Prowler. And with all that said, I will see you next time.